There's lots of talk about a new study that says that fats are good for us and carbs are bad, but is that what this study really says and what does it mean for us? That's what we're going to talk about today. So the research we're talking about today comes out of Canada, and this is actually a couple different studies that are based on the same set of data. And the data they're using comes from the Prospective Urban Rural Epidemiology Study, also known as PURE. And this data set includes over 135,000 people in 18 countries across the world. And these countries are in the regions of North America, Europe, South America, the Middle East, South Asia, China, Southeast, East Asia and Africa. And this is important because a lot of research is focused in North America and Europe. So you're getting high income countries that have similar lifestyle factors when you compare them to the rest of the world. So it's hard to know if the information you're getting from those studies is just specific to those people living in those circumstances or if it can really be applied to just people across the world as a whole. Because this data includes people from all of these different countries, that means we're getting different lifestyles, different food cultures, different income levels, and that diversity of different people in different circumstances makes the research stronger because it indicates that we're getting information that applies to humans overall rather than something that applies to a specific group of people in a specific situation. Now, of course, there are instances where it's nice to look at a specific group of people in specific circumstances because those circumstances might matter, but when we're trying to learn more about the human body and human nutrition in general, general, it's nice to have this diversity in the data. So with this data, one of the things the researchers looked at was the association between fat and carbohydrate in the diet and cardiovascular disease and mortality. And they found that a higher fat intake at about 35% of total calories was associated with a lower risk of death when compared to lower intakes. That total fat and individual fat intake, so looking at saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fats individually, were not associated with cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, or death from cardiovascular disease, and that a higher saturated fat intake was associated with a lower risk of stroke. They also found that a diet high in carbohydrates, more than about 60% of total calories, was associated with higher mortality, but not cardiovascular disease risk. So that's the first study. In the second study, they looked at the association between fruit, vegetable, and legume intake and cardiovascular disease and mortality. And in that study, they found that three to four servings of these foods per day was associated with a lower risk of death with higher intakes having little additional benefit. Whew, okay, that was a lot, but now you know what these studies say. Now, what does that mean for us? Some people have taken this research and now they're running around saying that this means that fats are good and carbs are bad and we need to be eating more fat and fewer carbs, but that isn't really what this research is telling us. I mean, fruits, vegetables, and legumes are all sources of carbohydrates, and this research is saying that having some of those in your diet is beneficial. So clearly the message here is not that carbs are bad. This research is actually pointing to a moderate intake of a variety of different foods as opposed to diets that are skewed towards carbohydrates and are low in fat. So it's not about carbs being bad or fats being good, but it's about the dietary pattern as a whole. And that's something that we have to remember when we look at nutrition research. It's hard to isolate variables. With research and science, what we want to do is have one variable change one thing and then see what happens. But with nutrition, we can't do that because when you change one thing, it usually shifts a bunch of other things around. So for example, if you increase the amount of carbohydrates, then you're also going to probably decrease the amount of fat because we only have carbs, fat, and protein to work with. Those are the three choices for sources of calories for us. So if you increase one thing, you're going to decrease something else and vice versa because we don't have an infinite capacity for food. There is a limit on what we can eat. And so changing one thing is going to make something else change as well. We also have to remember that nutrients come from foods and foods have a variety of different nutrients in them. So when you start changing carbs or fat, for example, that could also impact other nutrients because these things come packaged together in our food. So it's hard to know, was it the thing that you changed or was it 
some other nutrient that was affected. Also, nutrients interact with one another. So maybe if you supplement with a certain nutrient, for example, you see one result, but when you get that nutrient from food, you see a different result because that nutrient is coming packaged with other stuff and that affects the way that it's absorbed, the way that our body uses it. A good example of this would be fat soluble vitamins since we're talking about fats and carbohydrates. We need fat in our diet to absorb certain vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K all need fat for absorption. So people who are having lower fat diets might also be absorbing less of these vitamins. And so maybe that's the thing that's causing the result. The bottom line is we can't have causation here. We just have this association and there are all these other different factors at play. And I think the fact that a lot of people have looked at this research and what they have taken out of it is that carbs are bad and fat is good. I think that is just part of a bigger problem we have. And that is our desire to grab onto one food group or one nutrient as the good, perfect, wonderful, magical thing that's gonna make us live forever or the evil bad thing that's killing us. And this is something I've talked about in a whole separate video. So I will link that for you if you missed that one because I'm not gonna go into the whole thing right here. But the bottom line really is that that's not how health works. That's not how nutrition works. It isn't just one thing, it's a combination of things including other lifestyle factors and our genetics. Something else to point out about these specific studies is that the data that they're using comes from food frequency questionnaires. So these are questionnaires that people fill out and it basically says, you know, how often do you eat this food? How often do you eat that food? And they go through and answer the questions and then they use that to map out what the person's overall diet looks like. But the problem with these is that they can be inaccurate because you are relying on people to recall what they ate and to make accurate estimations. And people aren't necessarily good at that. You're also relying on people to be honest. And sometimes Sometimes people aren't honest about what they're eating. They overestimate the things that they perceive to be the good foods and they underestimate the things that they perceive to be the bad foods. And that's not even necessarily an intentional thing. It's just kind of a natural thing overall. We kind of overestimate the good things and underestimate the bad things. It's just a natural tendency and that can happen with these food frequency questionnaires. Now, of course, when they make these things, they do everything they can to make them as accurate as possible, to make them good tools for measuring what people are eating, but we still have to acknowledge that there are these issues with food frequency questionnaires and it's not going to be as good as if you recorded every single thing that a person actually ate. With that said, they're used a lot of times in research because it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper to ask someone what they ate and ask them to fill out this questionnaire than to lock someone up and record everything they eat for an extended amount of time. Something else we have to think about with this is the level of risk and this is something that I discussed in my what the health documentary video. So if you missed that one, I will link that for you because I talk about this more there. But the short version for this study is that, you know, if you think about it, okay, in this study, about 6,000 people died over the course of the study out of the 135,000 plus people who were included. Now, if you want the real numbers, I will link the studies for you, but those are the rounded versions. And then you see, for example, the people in this study that had the higher fat diets had a 23% lower risk of death than the people that had the lower fat diets. Now, at first glance, that 23% sounds like a huge number, but when you remember that we're talking about 6,000 out of 135,000, so that's already relatively a small number, and then we're taking a percentage of that, it's actually a lot smaller of a risk than it seems at first glance. Now, it's still a change, it's still a decrease in the risk, so it's not that we should just throw it out because, well, it's not that big of a change, it doesn't matter, but we don't wanna make it out to be something bigger than it is. Now, with that said, I also think we have to remember the context of this whole situation. So if you went around and asked people like, is fat good for you? I think some people might say, well, certain fats, or yeah, I know we need fat, but they wouldn't say that, you know, that they would think that higher fat intake would be associated with a lower risk of death. And we have people 
who run around, in fact, saying that fat is this evil nutritional boogeyman, that we need to be eating as little fat as possible, that people should be restricting their intake of almonds and avocados because they're high in fat and fat's gonna kill us all. You know, when you have that going on, I think this seems a little bit more important to acknowledge and pay attention to. But again, like I said, we don't wanna make it out to be more than it is. Another thing to remember is that this is just two studies based on one set of data. We don't want to make recommendations based on one study. We want to make recommendations based on the body of research overall. So is this research interesting? Yes. Do we need more research on this stuff? Yes. We don't take this and say fats are good, carbs are bad, especially when that's not what this research even indicates. We take this as a piece of information and then we keep gathering more information from there. This research is important because it includes a lot of people from a lot of different parts of the world and that's notable. It also has some weaknesses and there are more things that we need to do moving on from this study, more areas that we need to poke and prod and look at. But I think right now what we can say is that, you know, things Things are just like they were yesterday. It's about eating a variety of foods and it's also about paying attention to other areas of health and not focusing so much on food that you neglect things like movement, sleep, stress, and your relationships. And let me know in the comments, do you have any other thoughts on this research or nutrition research overall? Do you find it confusing? Do you find these types of videos helpful where I break it down? And if you are new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and videos like this one, then make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle it really doesn't have to be complicated and I want to show you how to do it. And if you want to watch some more videos, I will have a couple linked over there that you might like. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.